shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Today I pay tribute to the black women who will come before me, who stood where I now stand 400 years ago in the colony of Jamestown, Virginia. First African slaves in the colonies, feet shackled, hands bound, unknowing what may lie ahead, but believing that their children and their children's children would be free. Today I stand in the tradition of these yet free, but yet future seeing freedom, black women. Today I stand as a black tech ecosystem builder, a black woman seer. You may ask yourself, Dr. Wilson, what does that mean? Well, I'm glad that you've asked. It means that I spend my days talking about the ever coming tech innovations and how they would affect the lived experiences of black people in the US. Some days I talk about bias algorithms. And then some days I yell at the top of my lungs to people who look like me, the robots are coming, the robots are coming, the robots are coming and it's not Amazon. <laughs> and the oldest woman in my church, Mother Montgomery will say to me, well, well, Fallon, baby girl, them robots gonna be fine. How about you sit down and have some of this pound cake I made? I am not sure Mother Montgomery believes the robots will be fine. I don't know if she knows what a robot is. And I don't know if I'm just working her last nerve and she wants me to sit down, but it's probably the last nerve. But even when people who look like me don't get it, I spend my time in what I call the proverbial wilderness, like the prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, deciphering tech trends, divining racial tech disparities. I sit and I listen to the automated gods tell me what I need to tell the people. And I get things to say, some of them are informational. So I go to my church family and I say, hi church family, did you know that deep fake is not a knockoff Michael Kors bag, but is a database with thousands of images of your face that people use to steal your identity. Yeah, they look at me like that's cool, right? And then I go to the parent-teacher workshop and I tell the parents, did you know that an algorithm is like a recipe to make a dinner? Instead of a pound of flour, a, a sprinkle of sugar, you take a pound of cold and you put it between two brackets, bracket, bracket, slash, slash. And they look at me and they laugh just like you laugh, right? And then sometimes the things I divine are prophetic. They are from the word of God. Prophecies. You know it's a prophecy when I say it like this. If you don't do this, then this will happen, right? And so I go to my uncles. I say, uncle, why did you crit? your $28 truck driving job to drive Uber and Lyft at surge and peak hours. I say, go back and get your job. And he says, why needs? I say, because when Lyft and Uber figure out how to automate their vehicles, mm -hmm, that's coming, mm -hmm, right? And when they break public transportation, sorry, Lyft and Uber, mm -hmm, people like you will not have jobs. Wages will go down, prices will go up. And in this precarious in market that you're in, you won't have a job. And then sometimes I go to the State Board of Education leaders at the state. Hey, leaders up there, please fund public education. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Joseph, if he's in here, right? And then I go to the council members, fund public education. Why, Dr. Wilson? Because if you do not, they, our urban schools, will not have the funding and the budget 
to afford tech instructors to teach AP computer science. We cannot compete with the private sector for these instructors. And let's be clear, sometimes when I'm in the proverbial digital wilderness, I hear obvious, factual things. I say to my tech companies, hi, Uber, Lyft, hey, if you continue not to use blind recruitment processes, you will continue Facebook to recruit people that do not look like me. Simple. I tell my VCs and my venture capitalists, if you don't fund black tech startups, you will contribute to the widening racial wealth gap of black and white families in this country. And then because I'm a prophet, I have to end with some grand opus, some grand thing. And then I tell everybody, did you know that my ancestors in the country of Mali, the Dogon people in 3200 BC, mapped the entire galaxy. I said we mapped the entire galaxy. That's a hand clap. Mm -hmm. And so it bothers me when then I hear people say to me in these meetings, because I'm in so many committee meetings, y'all, it's just ridiculous in the city. Our, well, black children, they don't understand STEM and science and math. And I say, excuse me? And then I tell him, well, I'm reminded of another black seer of the early 21st century by the name of W.E. Du Bois, who said in the, yeah, give it up to him, the souls of blackness, he said, how black man, black woman, black, how does it feel to be the problem? The past problem, which was the digital divide, the present problem, which is there are not enough black people in the STEM pipeline, Fallon. The future problem, oh my gosh, quadruple unemployment of black and brown people because of automation. Tell me, black people, how does it always to be the quintessential American problem? But because I am a prophet, my response is this. Black people have always dreamed of our freedom. We have always seen possible out of impossible futures. We have used what Robin Kelly, the scholar, calls the radical black imagination to make ourselves whole. We have used stars in the sky, not for innovation and disruption, but to map our way to freedom. We have used, as Henry Hicks said, blues, jazz, gospel, pop, rock, country, all of that, to make more collective our soul and more collective our hope. Black people have always had to believe in a future that they could not see. Even now as the world changes because of automation and artificial intelligence, we believe in things we cannot see, especially black women. We are amazing, and that's a clap too, yes. We, we believe in it. And so even when I'm walking down the street talking to myself, the robots are coming, the robots are coming. I know some of you think I am crazy, but I am not. Some of you call me strong and angry when I come directly and tell you what my community needs about innovation. But let me tell you, we're going to pay tribute to these amazing black women who by their brow, sweat, bone, and marrow make magic happen in communities of color. They work with urban leagues to create computer science workshops and coding camps that are culturally relevant. They hold Facebook and Amazon, all of these people uh, accountable for their racist facial recognition software that would tell me I am an object. They do this on a shoestring budget and because they love our people. And so we're going to do a call and response tradition. And so we're going to practice. This is crowd participation. I'm going to say a name. And then you're going to say, say her name. So we're going to practice. Dr. Fallon Wilson. Say her name. But you have to do it with more enthusiasm as I go forward. Felicia Hatcher of Black Tech Week. Say her name. Allison Scott of K-Port Capital. Say her name. Timmy Gabrun of Black and AI. Say her name. As Ayori Selassie of Selfpreneur. Yeshi Miller of Data for Black Lives. Hadia Majid of HBC VC. Morgan Debon of Blavity. Joy Bulalwam Winnie of the Algorithmic Justice League. 
Cheryl Dorsey of The Plug. Bertina McKinney of All Things Greatness and STEM related, because I know she's in this building. And so these black women, both locally and nationally, are building national and local tech ecosystems to support an inclusive future. But you're probably saying to yourself, hey, Dr. Wilson, you didn't talk about the problems. You didn't talk about what is your prophecy. We must have a prophecy. For I say, yes, I do. I do. This is my, now this is, I'm getting serious now. <clears throat> I dream of a national unified black tech ecosystem with reminiscent of Black Wall Street before white supremacy annihilated it. Reminiscent of Mary McLeod Bethune's black cabinet during the Great Depression. I dream of a united black tech ecosystem that is fraught with the ideological debates of W.E. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington. They would say, should we spend our time talking about digital fabrications? Or should we talk about artificial? What? I dream of a flesh and blood Wakanda-like ecosystem. <laughs> Y'all can laugh all you want, but I dream it. One, and then I get prophetic, this is how you do it. I see, I see black genius and black brilliance cascading down the red hills of Georgia. I'm doing I Dream a Speech. I, I see black brilliance and black genius in the wetlands of the Mississippi Delta supporting the fostering of our first black unicorn startup, eradicating racial inequities and wealth and teaching machines to love my skin. I dream as Baby Shooks dreamed in one of my favorite books, Toni Morrison, Beloved. You see, Baby Shooks was a preacher and a seer too. And in the book, she was talking to these enslaved people and they were in the forest and it goes like this. Women crying, children laughing, men dancing. And then it got mixed up. Men cried. Women danced and children laughed. And they did this and it went on until they all were exhausted from being human, right? Falling into the clearing and baby Shook said to them, she did not tell them to go and sin no more because prophets can do that. I'm a prophet, I know. She told them the only grace that they could receive, listen to this audience, was the grace that they could imagine. See, this whole experience of America for a black person has always been about seeing us as human beings, not as enslaved objects, but as human beings, not as objects within your defective code. I'm a black seer, I do this work, these women do this work because we want machines to know who we are in the future. They will know us. And this is my dream. This is my prophecy for my people and for you today. Deep in my heart, I do that we 